Aloha, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Neens and I'm your host of Reaching Out. Today I am very excited on this Christmas Eve to have uh, my guest here. We met maybe about three years ago uh, in a different state uh, with the same way we meet um, anywhere in Hawaii. Eh, you from Hawaii, yeah? Uh, she is a versatile communicator with experience in print, TV, radio, web development, social media, you name it in media, she is, is capable and successful in doing it. Please welcome Liberty Peralta. How's Hi. it? Hi, thanks yeah. for having me. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, so I know you said you're a little nervous. No need to be. We're good, we're good. Um, so I mentioned that we met um, like three years ago, I think it was 2011, South by Southwest uh -huh. in Austin, Texas. Yeah. In the big exhibition. So we're talking about like tens of thousands of people go here, mm -hmm. and yet somehow we found each other. Um, it's a Hawaii thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think it's, uh, there's like some kind of magnet, mm -hmm. right? Some kind of energy that draws us together. Uh, we look at each other, it's like, eh, I think that person is from Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, was, it was definitely like that. Right. And then you were with um, Makaha Studios. I was. Uh, uh, visiting uh, South by Southwest as a part of Makaha Studios. But before right. that, I just wanted to talk about, you know, first, what school you went. But I think that's important. Yeah, that's that's always the first question, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So I, I went to Waianae High School. Right on. Um, class of 2004. Yeah, and, 2004. Um, <laughs> My son yeah. was born in 2004. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so Waianae High School, I was in the Sierra Productions program. Mm -hmm. I was actually one of a uh, handful of kids that started that program when they were freshmen. Oh, okay. I don't think that's very common anymore, but mm -hmm. um, because of all the restructuring and stuff, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when um, when I became a freshman at Wanai High School, I started out in Seawater Production, so I had all four years there. Oh, right on. Yeah. And so it's, the program starts out, you're, you're a freshman in high school, and, and how and why, you know? Um, were there other options, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Actually, I mean, why see writers production? Uh, so actually, uh, my first exposure with media production was at Waianae Intermediate. Okay. And my teacher there, Linda Ginoza, she brought up Sierra Productions and Candy Suiso, and it's okay. it's yes. such a great program, and you should check it out. And um, I remember at that time, one of my best friends was um, also considering okay. joining the program. So part of it was a, was a pure not pure pressure, but oh, yes. like oh, that's cool that my friend's doing it. I should check it out too. Right. Um, I was considering doing band oh. as well, um, so because I was doing band, I was I was a band geek <laughs> in intermediate actually. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elementary and, and, and I played the, the the bells like the oh. the xylophone. You yes, know? yes, yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yes. um, which was a lot of fun. But I ultimately ended up um, choosing the Sierra Productions route. And my sister actually, who's four years younger than me, she's a band geek. Oh, okay. Still is. She yeah. she goes to UH West Oahu. She plays band. Right on, right on. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my choices uh, in high school in the 80s, um, all of my friends and I considered joining either band mm -hmm. um, or the zoo instructors program. And so to be able wow. to, yeah, work <laughs> at the zoo. Right. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> this is the 80s. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really have the opportunity like uh, Sea Riders Production. And mm -hmm. today it's an award winning program. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much news about that surrounding it. And the group, and today's group, I believe, um, was in charge of filming and documenting um, our new governor's inauguration. That's right. Ceremony, celebration. Mm -hmm. So for me, I get excited about that. Yeah. I get excited about anything good coming out of the west side of Oahu mm -hmm. because traditional media doesn't talk enough about it. Yeah, that's very true. You know, and there's people like you that um, have created success um, yeah. uh, through uh, Candy's program and through mentors like Miss uh, Ginoza, like you said, mm -hmm. and yet, you know, you're not on the six o'clock news. Here you are on reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I'm behind the scenes anyway. So. <laughs> yes, behind the scenes. So tell me um, again, like, so you join C Riders, you're, you're a freshman in high school, and, and what's the process? Just for people that are, are wondering, what is that? So, so Sierra Productions, a lot of people think of um, Sierra Productions as video production, mm -hmm. but it actually encompasses a, a range of media fields. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could produce the yearbook. Um, the, the, when I was part of the program, I was involved in the newspaper side a lot. Okay. Um, currently, they're, they're, they don't have a physical newspaper anymore, mm -hmm. but they do have an online one that okay. they update. Um, and there was, there's web design now, there's, uh, there's like animation and wow. yeah, it's, it's a pretty expensive program, but a lot of people think of video production when they think of it. Yes, 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 right. It's a lot more, TV, a lot more than that. TV, YouTube, yeah. um, however, it's just all encompassing. Yeah, exactly. So it could be a good, uh, source for, uh, ThinkTech Hawaii, 
right, to really recruit from experienced yeah. uh, students. Yeah, I mean, it would be great if there were, you know, job opportunities mm -hmm. for these these kids who are interested in, in this field. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the equipment is provided by the school, or the mm -hmm. students have to have their own. So the equipment's provided by the school. So, right so Candy Suiza has been really good um, just through the years, yes. writing all these grants. So the equipment's all grant funded. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. To give people hands on. And do you folks work um, at all with any other um, any other companies did, at, at that time? Yeah. So when when I was at, at Sierra Productions, um, we had. Clients like we worked with Koalina oh, and Jeff okay. Stone, and we yes. worked with HMSA. We did a, a campaign for HMSA. Yeah. Um, it was, I think, it was an anti-drug yeah. campaign. Um, I remember that being a big deal when I was. I think I was a junior or a senior in, in HMSA. So speaking mm -hmm. of HMSA, mm -hmm. um, I was doing my research on you, and you have been a write, a contributing writer yeah. to Island Scene Magazine. Mm -hmm. Um, forever, I was joking around that you must have been 12 when you <laughs> Not too far uh, away from that. <laughs> um, which is pretty exciting that they're still publishing it. Yes. Right, for, their, uh, for their members. In mm -hmm. this day of digital mm -hmm. media, I mean, they even have a website for it and you can click on the All the articles are online. Yes, right, right. Online. The, so how that started was um, the editor at the time, Ignacio Lobos, mm -hmm. he, I think it was, it might have been right after the, the campaign that we did for HMSA, the, okay. the PSA campaign. And he approached me about doing an article for them. Um, and I, I was a senior in high school. Yeah. And I was what like... What do you want me to talk about? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm just a teenager. Like, yeah. And he was interested in getting a youth perspective on teenage obesity. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to see if I, if I knew anyone in the community that you know, wouldn't mind sharing their, mm -hmm. their story. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, I had a friend who um, didn't mind talking about her experiences mm -hmm. with, with that. So it, it worked out. That was the first piece that I did for them. That right, was and it's ago. been, uh, I mean, since then, if it was all three, you know, over 10 years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you've been a contributing writer. That's correct. Off and on. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not a solid 10 years, yeah. but when I find the time or when I get inspired, I'll and contribute. Yeah, I've been uh, contributing to HMSA's being808.com blog. Oh, yeah, Fernando with Pacheco, Fernando, yeah. Who was also a guest here. Mm -hmm. And I'm an off and on person too, and mm -hmm. I always commit to them. So it yeah. is on my list of uh, New Year's intentions to contribute <laughs> more. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> contribute more about, about my journey. One of the um, one of the articles I want to talk about was your most recent one in uh, the winter edition of, of Island Scene that you shared. Mm -hmm. It was very personal mm -hmm. um, for you, and mm -hmm. it's about uh, just... Uh, living with tinnitus. Yeah, uh, so I actually have a very mild form of it, mm -hmm. fortunately. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of managing it and making sure mm -hmm. it doesn't get worse. It's, I believe it's in my right ear. Okay. So uh, sometimes when in very quiet rooms I can notice it, mm -hmm. or I think they say sometimes, depending on what you had to eat mm -hmm. during the day, it could affect the, the severity of it, but like right now, it's fine. I don't really notice it. You're good. I'll be as noisy right. as, as possible. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know what tinnitus is, and I just got this from um, her article, it's just that ringing in your ear. Right. You know, it's the ringing in your ear that doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. You know, m many of us have experienced that, except mm -hmm. for you, it is, it is constant. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and so for me, I have a lot of empathy for that. Mm -hmm. um, I shared with you earlier that my mentor, um, Guy Kawasaki, actually. Um, has Meniere's disease, which in the way he explained to me is is the next step if we don't take care of um, tinnitus. And he yeah. explained to me that um, a lot of it is triggered uh, from salty food. Show you. Yeah, I remember reading that. You know, and mm -hmm. so it's like, once again, you know, our food that we no! love to eat. I know, our local <laughs> food that we love to eat. <laughs> yeah, not the reason why, yeah. you know, we should mm -hmm. eat in moderation. Right. And uh, perhaps use a little sodium. Exactly. Uh, show you. That's probably um, good to keep keep ourselves in check anyway. Right. So. And it's important, I think, for um, the generations. Like, I'm much younger than you. However, I am from that generation that started with the Walkman. You know, first it was the boombox, as loud as we can, as close yeah. to our ear while we walked around. Mm -hmm. Then we got the Walkman and you blasted it. Mm -hmm. You know, and now with the invention of, you know, new earphones mm -hmm. with, that go actually into your ear and still cranking it, you know, to the top. You know, that contributes to... Mm -hmm. um, your damage. I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that. Yeah. I, I took the bus actually a lot when, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. so I would be cranking headphones all the time, 
and I'm sure that didn't really help things. Yeah, and, I mean, the same with yeah. me, too. I mean, I went to every, in my younger days, yeah. you know, every rock concert that there was, every right. rap concert, any concert that was happening, you know, mm -hmm. was a thing to do. And I was, and, and for me, when I go to shows, I like to be in the front. Yep, yeah, right where there. It's loudest. <laughs> right by the speaker. It's bigger than what I mean now. Right. And just hearing it and just experience the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you can feel it boom in mm -hmm. your your whole body. Mm -hmm. And then when you get older, mm -hmm. though, you, you know. pay for it. <laughs> right. All those all of those choices. Yeah, so now actually one of my South by Southwest trips, I went to one of the, the vendor booths and they were selling these um, like ear protection, okay. like ear, they're kind of like earbuds or you put them in your ear to okay. protect yourself from damaging noise and okay. um, I invested in those. Yeah. It was actually a reasonable price um, and I use that every time. So different from the foam ones? Um, yeah, so it's not, it's actually, they say that it's better than the foam ones because the foam ones just sort of block out noise mm. and they don't really protect. Like seal the ear. Right, yeah. right. These are designed to, fil to more filter da the damaging sound okay. waves. Uh, I, I started using the, uh, the foam ones as an employee of one of the um, airlines. Mm -hmm. And um, it helps, but you're right, it just blocks out. Right. right. So I can still hear. Right. right. So noise is still getting in, but it doesn't protect anything on the inside. Okay. Right, exactly. So if you're tuning in, uh, take care of your hearing. Because uh, <laughs> we are lesson of the day <laughs> examples of you know blasting. And I was just doing it yesterday. <clears throat> I had mm -hmm. meetings all across uh, downtown Honolulu. Mm -hmm. My earphones are in, and I'm just mm -hmm. rocking out. Because it's hard. It's you can't hear it if there's so much noise around you, right? Right. So. You know, and so and, and plus, I like to be in the moment of my music. Right. Yeah. You know, and so and to rock out to with escape. It, yes, <laughs> before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. now, um, I mentioned Makaha Studios when I first met you, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to share a little bit. I know you're not involved with that group anymore. However, um, share a little bit about that group because sure. um, it's sort of like the next step mm -hmm. for uh, Seawater Production students. Right. So mm -hmm. it's an option for Seawater Production students to uh, basically be interns for Makaha Studios. Makaha Studios uh, is basically a uh, for-profit arm of Sierra to Productions. Okay. And if they choose to work there after they graduate, after the students graduate, they can do that. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was there, I was there for three years and I was in charge of their, their web development. Okay. So I helped build websites basically, yeah. which, is, which is fun. And when, when did you um, like first get the bug to build websites? Because this is very rare, right? Right. For a female right. to be a coder, programmer, mm -hmm you know, and be into it. Mm -hmm. It's like females in engineering. Yes, yes. It's, it's what? unusual. Yes. Um, I can't really pinpoint exactly mm -hmm. what it was. I know at the time um, I, I was looking at uh, different resources online, mm -hmm. seeing what other things that I could do. This is around the time that I had graduated from, or was about to graduate from, from HPU, mm -hmm. Boyd Pacific University, and um, exploring the different career options that I had. and. Um, Rick Grecia, who was part of, he was sort of in charge of Macaw Studios, he reached out to me and said that there is this position available and it involved web design and it, it was just, it was one of those serendipitous mo moments where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that sounds like something that, that I could do. So. Yeah, something different, right. so let me explore it. Right. So self-taught then. Self-taught. Self-taught. <laughs> Code monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Code know if you remember monkey, that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Right. Uh, not the easiest site to. Right. Uh, you know to navigate. It was very nineties. Yeah, and because it's very like flat page. Right. Flat page. But that's know. how I learned. Uh, that was one of the main ways that I learned was was through that, and also just interacting with, mm -hmm. you know, colleagues and asking questions. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Like you should really like be proud of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me. Um, I it was it wasn't until MySpace that I started to learn right. how to code. I that's taught myself. That's true. That's actually yeah. MySpace was a folks? big part of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, it was like getting my feet wet. You know. Right. And MySpace mm -hmm. was built with uh, HTML, HTML, and, right. and every place that I read when I when I want to uh, look at the hierarchy or the evolution of language, mm -hmm. every everyone says uh, HTML is not is not a language. <laughs> it's like okay, oh. you've got to learn something. In addition that. to that, it's like right. too basic, right? And then when yeah. we talk about like programming and coders, I mean that's such a, such a skill. Yeah, it is. You know that they do have some bragging rights. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, and, and can be snobby about, you know, what different languages um, they have. However, my I, I, it was like from MySpace, and I was fascinated by, uh, this means that, and I can move that photo here, and and that's how I got involved too. Right. It's it's picking apart what what each element of the code means and then mm -hmm. 
just kind of figuring it out yourself. Yeah. And I just kind of left at like PHP and then I just kind of surrendered and uh -huh. just now I just um, contract out smarter people <laughs> uh, than I am because then I went from right. PHP to Python and then Ruby's and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, okay, I it's, uh, it's all <laughs> I've, I've hit my, yeah, I've hit, I've hit my, hit my ceiling. <laughs> yes, I have. And now um, I'm going to look for help. So we're going to hit a, a commercial right now. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to talk story more with um, Liberty and find out what's going on at PBS Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right and what's good and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. How's it? And welcome back to Reaching Out. My name is Nines Faliafine, and I'm here with the very talented uh, Liberty Peralta at high. Libs. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, since, since meeting you three years ago, I followed your work. I get your emails from PBS. I share when I can. And wow. you're pretty amazing. Like, uh, oh, geez, I've, fo I've followed you, uh -huh. you know, um, not literally. Like, I don't know where you are on the <laughs> island. Um, however, I follow your work. And uh, when I have people on the show, it's because... I think I, I bring people on the show that are doing amazing things out there that I think other people need to know, like people need to know more yeah. about oh, the work awesome. that you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, awesome. At PBS um, Hawaii, you know, I do have um, friends uh, that are former board members and currently on the board, uh -huh. and I know that they've had this vision, and I can kind of see it happening now. Yeah. With this merging of traditional and social, mm -hmm. you know, and I know, um, and based on my own consulting and with my own agency, it's not easy mm -hmm. to get, you know, a you know public broadcasting station, you know, to adopt right. kind of social, uh, more creative, um, very vulnerable uh, practices. Right. You know, and so it has to come from the top. It's a big system. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's nationwide. Yes. And um, we see it happening on the national level too. They mm -hmm. have their own social media team, so it's you can see it moving. Um, yes. So, so it's it's uh, it's encouraging. Yeah. yeah and your I'm executive sure. director is uh, Leslie, Leslie Wilcox. Wilcox. Yes. Uh, well known in the media, local she's media here. Yeah. She's your <laughs> boss, and she's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, she really is. I've spoken to her before um, about social media, and she's pretty open. She is. Like, she, she wants us to, to be more um, transparent and so, uh, involved in social media because mm -hmm. she, she realizes that that's where people are getting their information now. Yes. Um, so it, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's sort of a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. We don't have the option of not doing it. Right, right. So. And when we talk about social media, you know, before it was so narrow, it was social networks. Uh -huh. And now for me anyways, you know, I'm like, it is, it is everything. It is your email campaign, it is any way you communicate electronically. Right, because it's all integrated. I mean, uh, one thing that maybe, I don't know if we're going to talk about, but we can. But we, so I actually was at Olamana yes. Marketing. They're now Olamana Loomis. Yes, yes, yes. With Alan Alan Tang. Tang. Right. So I was there for three years while I was at HPU, and that's where I kind of saw how all these different elements in marketing were integrated. Because that's what they, they were in right. integrated marketing. Integrated from. marketing, so. and it's not just, and I advise that too, uh, to a lot of my clients, right? You cannot just dump all your money in social media or right. all your money in traditional media. It has to be a mix. It's like investing. Yes, you got to, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? And then if it's not going well there, pull some money out and put it in the place where right. where it is working. Right. You know? Um, and so tell me about, like, uh, just that experience, like, because it sounds like, though, your experience has been uh, pretty open. Mm -hmm. your, your bosses, your leadership has been like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. That's unusual, too. It, it is, <laughs> but I like it. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, you know, I have a, a budget that I, it's a, like a promotional budget. Okay. And I've, I'm basically in charge of divvying out, okay, how much goes to what kind of promotion. Mm -hmm. So we've, 
Uh, I don't know if you remember earlier this year we did um, we did a free screening of yeah, uh, Sherlock. Sherlock. Yes, yeah. I remember. And <laughs> and Ryan Ozawa was there with with his daughter because yeah. his daughter apparently is a huge fan. But um, that we only spent a hundred dollars. Yes, to, I was to reading promote that. that. Mm -hmm. And yet you filled up. What, it was almost ninety like, percent. Oh, like basically only the two front rows were were empty. The, the whole theater yeah. was packed. So typical Hawaii, right? Yeah. Don't sit in the front. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sit uh, in the back. Right. right. Um, and so, and you just spent a hundred dollars on that, promoting that campaign. It was it was a boosted Facebook post. Okay. And we put uh, we put a listing in the TGIF, and okay. we got more than four hundred people to show up at this. I mean, granted, it's free, but true. true. <laughs> However, you, in my experience, um, charging five dollars or ten dollars gets a, a bigger commitment for right. people to come than if you say free, because when it's free, it's like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to go, you know. Right. There's, yeah, there's some. There's skin to, in the game. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So we we had uh, we worked with Consolidated Theaters on that, and they said, okay, if we make a voucher that they could get for six bucks, which is cheaper than a regular yes. movie ticket. And they can get popcorn and they get front of the line. Basically, they have a sort of like a fast pass yeah, where yeah. They, they get let into That's the That's a deal. Right. All right, so you get to watch yeah. a free, free movie, plus you get fast pass. <laughs> <laughs> for six bucks? Yeah, and, um, <laughs> and a free like hot dog or candy or something like mm -hmm. that because... If I'm not mistaken, and when I take my family and there's just four of us, mm -hmm. like we can spend almost a hundred dollars right. on one movie. Right. A popcorn, a drink, and maybe And all the tickets. Well, all the tickets. Of course. Yeah, so six bucks, that's yeah. a that's a good deal. And mm -hmm. spending only five dollars. So you mentioned you use uh, Facebook boosted posts. Mm -hmm. And for those that you don't know, um, and if you are on Facebook you'll see the little boost um, option to boost your post and uh, Facebook is great at that the advertising engine right. is very affordable right and they allow you to really target um, who you want to send it out to so it's you want to share a little bit about I don't want you to sure. share too much about what happens oh, in your mind okay I won't get too technical <laughs> but um, no but like, uh -huh. how did you target so basically we targeted people who already liked Sherlock or liked related shows Yes. And that lived in because it was only on Oahu. We we could target by zip code. Okay. Yes. So we did that too, and um, I guess that's why it was so um, effective. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, for myself, uh, I love that you can target target by island, target by zip code, mm -hmm. target by interests. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't want to target everyone, and that's right. basically sometimes what traditional advertising is. It's uh, I, like I always point to the billboard. Right, you put it up. You never know who's going to see it. You might know, right. you know, unless you're targeting people who drive. You're, you're casting a very wide net. When yes, you, yes, when yes. You do that. And then with the the advertising at five bucks, mm -hmm. you could really start talking to the people that you want to talk to. Exactly, right. because they've said I like Sherlock. Right. Right. You so know, they're already in. Right, and that's right. how you get Katie Ozawa. <laughs> to come, right? Because you targeted her dad, who said, "Oh yeah, my Please, daughter dad. wants to go," and then you know they're right. going to go. Right, and mm -hmm. that's how you do it, and right. that's how you do a, a campaign to get 400 people for less than a hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, and I listen to people all the time, like, should we have more money and this and that, and like mm -hmm. you said, it's like uh, playing, it's like stock exchange, it's like investing. Right, you have to just find the right balance of everything. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I should mention too is, you know, Facebook has become very much pay to play, mm -hmm. yes. and um, I think that's why it's important to to have some sort of budget for for social media now, especially if you're doing. Absolutely, Facebook. right. So there's two two things that I always advocate to budget, right? So the human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please budget for your human beings that right. are uh, helping to support uh, your company. Mm -hmm. um, and then today you have to. And I, and I see not just Facebook, however, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, even Instagram is experimenting. And mm -hmm. Instagram is owned by Facebook, by Facebook. However, they're all looking for ways to kind of leverage and, and make a profit, right? Right. You know, um, off of the services that they provide that all of us use. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't mind. Like as a market, I don't mind all the advertising. It it's kind of cracks still, me right. up what they what they show me, mm -hmm. like what I want, right? <laughs> like, yeah, oh, that. you think I want that? Yeah. You know, like there's not that many wrinkles. It's right? pretty funny because I'm I'm in the market now to to replace my 14 year old Hyundai. Okay. And basically, I'm looking for another car. So. All these like car ads are now popping up. In sure, Facebook. they're remarketing, right? Right, ads. right. It's amazing. I see people on there and they get a little spooked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in Google they were searching for something, and then on Facebook now the advertising is saying that. Mm -hmm. It all has to do with the permissions that you give them. Right, right. It's not some kind of um, 
Like they're hacking into Yeah, you. there's none <laughs> of that, people. Like they, it, they're just pulling in information that you, your settings that you have mm -hmm. on your own browser has mm -hmm. said, okay, mm -hmm. okay, you can have that stuff about me. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I look for like a certain shirt, it's just amazing how, huh? like if I'm doing like baby shopping mm -hmm. or like the ads are just off. Right, because I was looking for something for my niece or my nephew. Like a baby shower. Kind right, of right, right, right. Yeah. Right, that and happened like, to me too. Yeah, then I'm like, oh, let me search for something else so that it can show some kind of relevancy. Right, right, and, and, then, <laughs> and so it just cracks me up what they think, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I don't do any searching or I clear or I change my settings, mm -hmm. um, they go off of what I share on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know who's really good at that is uh, Netflix. Yes, and um, it's like they know your movies. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense because they keep track of what you do watch. But it's great yes. how now you could you can set up different profiles. Mm -hmm. They've they figured out that people are using uh, one account. Right. Like families are using one account to, to view Netflix. Right. So how do you right mm -hmm. display it to me right. and my children. Right. Right. And not you know, not their types so of I don't want to see what my sister watches. Yeah. I don't want to see that. Right. right. Uh, my kids uh, I forget what show. Amazing the big guy. It looks like the Michelin guy. What's that movie? Um, Ghostbusters? Well, what? see, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh -huh. right? But it's a recent movie that came out. Uh -huh. uh, Big Hero 6 oh, or something. Oh, yeah, Big Hero 6. Yeah. Big Hero 6. So I wanted great to movie. see that. I was like, I don't want to see that. I, I heard it was great. <laughs> However, I'll wait for it to come out on Netflix. <laughs> and I'll go, yeah. go to the theater. Um, so wonderful. It's, it's, it's encouraging for me to hear that an organization like PBS, uh, na national as well as local, mm -hmm. are embracing uh, social options mm -hmm. uh, to integrate into uh, their marketing as well as their community building and mm -hmm. even advertising. Because for right. a nonprofit, that's almost unheard of. Right. You know, um, <clears throat> except. But it's so easy yeah. to do because you don't have to invest very much in it. Um, and you can target the people that you want to target. You can specify income levels. Right. You can specify where they, you know, zip codes where they live. Mm -hmm. You can specify uh, whether they do make charitable contributions. Yes. You can you can specify that too. So there's right. so it's so granular. Yeah. That um. That you really are talking to. So for five dollars, if you talk to twenty people mm -hmm. for five dollars, but they are the twenty people that fit your profile. Right. They're more likely your, to. It's better than spending a hundred dollars to reach five hundred people that may or may not care right. about, <laughs> about your organization. Right, right. Right, and so for me, it's important because I've been evangelizing that for a long time now mm -hmm. uh, to different clients that uh, it is important to have a budget, something there in order to reach, uh, mm -hmm. especially on all of these bigger, and if, and if the bigger uh, social networks and media publishing tools are going that route of pay to play, mm -hmm. um, then the little ones that follow behind or come out, in, they're going to start out that way anyways. Right. So it's better to just have that. Um, let's talk, sorry, about uh, PBS too. Um, <coughs> so, so what is your, as, as the Director of Communications, right? <laughs> That's and you such do, a lofty title, yeah. right? <laughs> director of Communications. <laughs> it's like you work in the governor's office. <laughs> right? Um, and so what, what, what does that entail? Like everything? Like you have to produce everything? Uh, so, so we have uh, different departments in the station. So we have a creative services department that produces okay. all of our local shows. And they produce um, the local spots that you see on our air. Mm -hmm. um, there's a advancement, which is basically our fundraising department. Okay. And we have engineering. And you have uh, the Hikino department. We'll talk about Hikino, I guess, yes, a little yes, bit later. Yes. And <clears throat> my department, it's actually, it's, it's more like a division because there's only mm. three of us okay. there right now. Yeah. But the three of us, we do the social media. We do all the stuff on our website. We're actually mm -hmm. redesigning our website. We're working okay. with Ikezo right now. Okay, yeah. To, with, yeah, to so redesign our website, Dan, which I'm excited about. Yeah. Dan, Dan, yeah. Dan Luke. And, yeah, um, Dan Luke. He's Ziggy. also a host on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we're working with them on developing a new site that I'm really excited about. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah, it's a long time coming, I think. Yeah, uh, because um, um, some people know who are close to me. When my for about for when he was five, for about four or five years, mm -hmm. my little boy um, he could only watch um, PBS Hawaii. <laughs> no Nickelodeon, no none of the other stations, right? Um, and it was just because. He was watching a show one day, and I overheard. I wasn't paying attention. I just kind of overheard something, and I thought it was age inappropriate. inappropriate mm -hmm. Right? They're kids. I think they were talking about dating or something. And I was like, Oh, is this the Disney Channel? What what channel is this? And so then, just like that, right? You can only watch um, PBS. And so, even on his iPad, only right PBS. 
right? So everything electronic for him, mm -hmm. or go outside and play. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically my childhood right there. Yeah, right, all of us. Yeah, right, right. right. Sesame Street, or and then go out. play outside. Yeah. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> right, so it wasn't our cartoon or our show. And so um, one of the things he would tell me um, is that the he couldn't catch local on the uh, PBS app. Right. Right, so is that something that you folks are working on? So actually, um, it, it should, or it with should the, be. With the website render? So the uh, website, when you visit the responsive? website, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's built to be, it's going to be built to be responsive. Okay. We're hoping to launch it in early 2015. Okay. So it's, it's So soon. he's it's like four or five, and he could have been your, your beta tester, but right. he kept telling me, like, then I said, well, if it doesn't work the way you want it to, go play outside. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, um, and he loved it. He mm -hmm. watched the fundraisers, the telethons, he wow. was on. Um, so not just the kids stuff? No. Everything. It was a, it's the only station he could watch. Right. So if he felt like <laughs> watching it, um, I, had to put, I had to draw the line at uh, PBS Insights, though. It was a yeah, little, that's a little too high yeah, level. Yeah, when I he think. came in, he said, I don't know what they're talking about. The adults are just arguing. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a they're Yeah, having a that's discussion. what I said. I said, it's for right. adults. I mean, mm -hmm. it's something I love to watch, mm -hmm. right, Insights. Yeah. Um, and so I'm excited that you folks are... Um, Revamping your website. I'm excited to too. Because <laughs> yeah, it is still a little, little leaning in the 90s. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And um, will you folks be producing more, uh, more content on there? So will it be like kind of like a blog or more news? So Leslie's blog, which, mm -hmm. which was on a third party website, it was yes. on um, TypePad. TypePad, yep. Right. I used to subscribe to that. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're, we're thinking about, you know, what do we do with this blog now that we're going to have this website. So we're still exploring different options. We're, we're even talking about setting Leslie up with Twitter. Oh, so, so wow. Just, right? <laughs> so um, seeing which options work best for her. Yeah, so. I think um, uh, definitely I'm going to advocate for her to keep writing and keep mm -hmm. sharing her thoughts because mm -hmm. that's a big deal, right, when you can get inside the mind of uh, an executive director. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a, a break right now. So we're going to take a break right now, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Liberty about... Um, the award-winning show Hiki No, and then what's in the future. Mahalo. Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward to, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia, and by Asia we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world, uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back. Uh, I am Needs Faleafine, and this is Reaching Out. And one of these days, we're going to actually film what happens in the studio during commercial break <laughs> and air it uh, as a hol holiday special. Um, <laughs> I'm back here with Liberty. And uh, when we ended, uh, we're talking about uh, your executive director, Leslie Wilcox, mm -hmm. you know, whether she should blog or tweet. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm going to advocate for everything mm -hmm. uh, because the more, um, you know, I can consume more information, from somebody like her, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just her thoughts and her leadership thoughts and whatever's going on. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, that excites me, right? Uh, and the more that it. you're you're immersed in it too, yeah. You and then I'm going to become part of yeah, then community. I know her, then we're, we're friends. Yeah, we're BFFs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie, she follows me on Twitter. She's my Facebook friend. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of my friends um, had said, uh, "We we have friends." Right, and then we have our finger friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I saw that just the other day, and I thought, ah, we do. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, yeah I, I thought it was too, right? Um, and so what I wanted to talk about was award-winning show, Hiki No. Hiki No. Mm -hmm. Hiki No. Can, can Do. Can Do. Um, I love it. Uh, it was um, years before I thought, like, why doesn't the kids do the news? Like, what is their perspective on it? Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, Hiki No. Boom. I even thought to name it Hiki No. What? Yeah, he keep that <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, you can even ask Noi. Uh, <laughs> wow. I had this conversation with her, and like a couple years later, it came uh -huh. out. And I even went to, wanted to buy Hiki dot no, except it was too expensive. <laughs> that's oh, like, okay. Ah, that's too much money. Yeah. You know, except <laughs> I thought like I want to know what the kids think about what's going on, and let them tell the stories. Right. About the issues facing Hawaii, facing the world. Right. Because we don't hear enough of that, and actually, the the impetus of or, you know, the sort of the origins behind mm -hmm. Hiki no. A lot of it started with programs like 
Cigarette Productions. Yes. And I like how this is coming full circle. Mm -hmm. um, for you. Right, for yeah. me. It's like, oh, now I'm involved in this Tiki No program that was mm -hmm. inspired by the program that I went to, you know, yes. that I was involved in high right. school. Um, and, since 01. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, the, the great thing with Hiki No is that the students are telling these stories mm -hmm. and um, there's, there, there's this one story that I guess we're going to be talking about. Sure, sure. About yeah, you can lead right into Vic it. Victoria Cuba. Yes. And um, she, she's, she was a Waipahu High School graduate mm -hmm. and she was homeless. Her family was homeless. And um, actually the, the interesting part of that story that the Waipahu High School kids um, produced was that that wasn't even the story that they were intending on mm. telling. They were actually uh, looking at doing a story about college, their college prep program at school. Mm -hmm. And Victoria was, uh, she was involved in Hikino already, mm -hmm. but they, she was just one of the subjects that they were thinking of interviewing um, mm -hmm. for this college prep story. And they, they found out that she was homeless. And um, I guess they realized that, that was a better Sure. Story. Yeah. Let's not talk about college prep. Let's talk about real life. What's happening right. to my peers mm -hmm. um, being homeless? And um, I do know uh, Victoria. Um, our paths crossed in 2011 when she um, came with the Wapa High School to the Design Thinking Hawaii Boot Camp. Mm -hmm. And um, you would never know, like the the fire that she has, right, um, for life. You know, to succeed, to live, the mm -hmm. way she presents herself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, unless she shared it, I would never suspect. Right. She never. She never let on that. That was. That was the her case. challenge every right. day. Right. Right. Every day, when everyone else is worried about like, what am I going to wear to school? You know, all that, all the other things that are almost on the surface. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to say it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter to other people. I'm mean, here. She is, right. Wondering where am I going to sleep? Mm -hmm. You know, and still seeking the support of her family, mm -hmm. you know, her mom. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, she's no longer... Right, she's no longer um, yeah. in that situation. Mm -hmm. She, it, it, you know, it, and it wasn't because of Hikino either. She mm -hmm. was already on her way yeah. to... So it wasn't because of Design Thinking Hawaii either. Right, she right. She was already on her... She is on her way mm -hmm. to becoming one of Hawaii's future leaders. She's, she's, like, she's attending... She's yeah, yeah, she's in college. Yeah. She, she's at the dorms at UH. And um, just last week, started working at PBS Hawaii. Oh, um, we just she had applied apparently for a production, student production technician position, and she she got the job. She was qualified for it, and yes. she got the job. And it was it's conven convenient for her because we're just down the street from where she dorms. So, right. and so they're showing the episode of uh, uh, that aired on Hiki No. And for mm -hmm. those of you watching, if you want to watch the story of her about Victoria, just go ahead to the PBS Hawaii. PBS Hawaii dot org. Dot org website, mm -hmm. and then you can watch it. She's a very powerful um, person. If you want to be inspired before the new year to do something in 2015, like this year. It's a good story for, for, yeah, for this season, but just, I mean, year round. Yeah, but it's going to inspire you to like, do something. Right, yeah. and the, the thing with the homeless situation in Hawaii too, like that I notice is that no one really is talking about the youth. Yeah. The youth that is out there. Right. I mean, right. when when we talk about the homeless, we talk about, you know, people who are on drugs or people right, right, who right. are veterans and have PTSD, right. but no one really talks about the kids or the yes. teenagers. And this this story, I think, provides a good perspective right. from that angle. There's two there's two um, faces of the homeless issue that, that I find inspiring um, is, one, the working homeless, mm -hmm. right? That could be any one of us, right? Right. They're still out there working and... I know quite a few people that have supported them. And then there's this youth, right, these teens going to school and uh, working with, through Design Thinking Hawaii, that um, nonprofit volunteer group, mm -hmm. um, we've been able to work with uh, students from Castle, Waipahu even, um, Campbell, and have identified other students as well who were homeless, mm -hmm. uh, same situation, and then yet to see them just have such drive Right. in their life. It's right. like, man, I better get up and do something today. You know? right. I mean, because I guess it could go both ways. It could be, you know, giving up mm -hmm. or like just taking it at face value and then mm -hmm. the other side to it where you could actually, you know, be inspired to, to right. do something about it. Yeah, to do something, to work hard. And it's good to see kids that are taking that, that latter route. Yeah, and it's sure. not, uh, and in the years that I've experienced her, like, there was not one time, like, she really flinched 
Mm -hmm. She just was like, kind of focused. So you folks have picked up a fantastic person um, on your folks' team. She's great. She's great. She's, um, she's, she'll be a valuable part of the team for sure. <laughs> yeah, and it's like coming full circle too because she was still part of Hikino. She, yeah, so she, she already knew what she wanted to do. She, she, mm -hmm. wants to do, she wants to be in media in some capacity. So yeah. Maybe I'm just going to lure out. her away from my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I just see her as uh, just someone who's just an amazing leader. She has, she has amazing drive, and mm -hmm. she's, she's like a sponge. Yeah. Yeah, You're she, right. she, she learns so fast. And there's, a, there's another student, actually, that's, um, that works for us now, too. Her name is Shisa okay. Kahuna Ele, and she went to Kamehameha. Okay. And she started out in Hikino, too. I think she was among the first... Like the first group when they Yeah, the first that. cohort that um, started doing Hikino stories, and mm -hmm. she was at Chief as Kamakahele. She, she's from Kauai. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's where she started, and now she's, she's also a student production technician with us. Oh, so awesome. we have two Hiki, former Hikino students who... Um, or not. So working. it's like, uh, like you said, like full circle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sort of like a little lost words because I'm all like excited. <laughs> what? That's awesome. <laughs> Wait, speaking of full circle, I just have to mention this yes. too. I don't know if you know this, but the, um, the first position that I had when I first started working at PBS Hawaii was multimedia writer. Okay. And the only reason why I knew about that job was because you had tweeted out the link yes. to apply. And I just happened, again, serendipity, right? I was, I, this was, I was at Macaw Studios right. and I was looking for a, a writing job because I, I figured uh, I'd rather you know, do that as a full-time mm -hmm. job. And then I saw that link and I applied. Oh and that's actually gosh. how I started our campaign. So, so I just um, <laughs> asked, I, I met with, um, so my good friend, Ian Kitajima, mm -hmm. was, uh, he's, I, on our board. he's still on the board. And um, that's how I got to meet the executive director. And what I asked from the communication people then was, um, can you just put me on your, mail, your email list? Mm -hmm. Whenever you want somebody to be pushed out, mm -hmm. I'll get the email and I will share it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that easy. was my way of giving back, like, how do I, help this nonprofit besides watching TV and, and donating, like helping to get the word out, mm. connecting them with the right people. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you didn't know that. I, I, I didn't I, I know. I can't believe we never talked about that. <laughs> no. Wow. So thanks, Neen. You're welcome. <laughs> Tweet me you anytime. <laughs> wow. I, I, you know, I always wonder, like, who the heck reads my tweets? I do, apparently. <laughs> Every once in a while, liberty. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just my way of giving back. So I still do get your emails because I'm still on that Great. email list. And I'll share it. So you, you get know, our program highlights. Yeah, program highlights, what's going on. Yeah. And it's good to know what's going on in the community. And just, uh, I mean, one, as a resident, as a parent, you know, like, do we have other choices? Mm -hmm. You know, besides the same things that we do, we're always looking for um, we're an alternative family looking for alternative entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on <board>. choices. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like something different to do. Um, for those that are watching, parents, uh, even students, how does one get involved or in Hikino? Oh, so they could just contact um, our, our managing editor. Her okay. name is Susan Yim. She, um, she's a longtime journalist. She was okay. at the, I guess it was the advertiser for years, the Star Bulletin. Um, and they can email her. So her, her email okay. address is s s y m s y i m yes at pbshawaii.org, and they can email her and get and on board. Yeah, get right. on board. Yeah. So it's for any it, your your school doesn't have to be involved though. So no. So um, actually, that that might be a good first step okay. is um, see school. if right see if your school's already involved because then that's one less step. Herbal. Right. Yeah. If your school doesn't currently have a media program. I would suggest um, talking to administration to, or talking mm -hmm. to a teacher who might be interested. And I start building out your team. Right. That's how it starts. Mm -hmm. One person. So I just want to thank you very much for being on the show. Oh, Maybe thank you for having me. This is fun. Yep. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, Merry Christmas to all of you, and happy holidays. Aloha.